This is what I bought. This is a 1998 Jeff Gordon uh, race car camera. It's got so many cool details. The, the front of it is obviously amazing. Like this is just so cool. <laughs> This video is brought to you by Paddock Focus Motorsport Photography Workshops. Want to learn more about how to become a professional motorsport photographer or just take better racing images? Check out paddockfocus.teachable.com and use PF YouTube for 10% off. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this in the comments, but I think film is stupid. I, I think film photography is stupid. Um, it really frustrates me for a lot of reasons. I hope you listen to this video. I hope you don't just go off in my comments and be like, Jamie's a f idiot. Uh, but I just don't like the film photography elitism. I don't know how else to describe it. It's an elitism. It's like being a crossfitter or a vegan. You have to tell everybody that you shoot film. Like it's, it's just, it's in your bio. It's in every post you make, like film is better. That's what really annoys me. You know, I'll see pictures from photographers that are famous that shoot film and everybody's in their comments being like, bruh, the tones, bruh, the vibes, bruh, the nostalgia, bruh, film's better, bruh. Like it just, it really annoys me that we give, we give a pass for pictures that are not good pictures. Like if you took that picture on your iPhone or a digital camera, everybody's gonna be like, this guy's an incredibly mid photographer. But because it's shot on film, because it was shot on Portrait 400, it's suddenly a better picture. And I don't like that mentality of just because something was shot on film that it's better. I just wanna preface all of this by saying I have the highest, Ay. Now that is not to say that I don't have the highest respect for motorsport photographers and photographers that were shooting pretty much everything because there wasn't an alternative to film 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago. Like motorsport photographers in the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s were the best photographers in the world as far as I'm concerned. Like they're shooting cars that aren't going slower than they are today. Like in fact, they're going faster than they are today and they're doing you know, pan shots at a 15th of a second and they don't know if they ever got the, the shot right. Like they may never see that shot until it gets printed in a magazine or a newspaper or an advertisement for whoever they were shooting for. They were the best photographers in the world. That's not the same thing as what I'm seeing today. Like I'm seeing people that just take a snap and it's inherently better because it was just shot on film. That's not the same thing. And that's what really annoys me is it's, we've lost the quality of photographers that had that like exceptional photography ability many decades ago. And now we're just replacing it with like, film is better. I don't like that. However, I'm now shooting film. So all of that, like just throw that out. Um, I'm now shooting film. Why am I shooting film? I really don't know. Uh, mainly because I want the likes and clicks. I think that it's kind of an interesting thing for me to do because I have the access. I can take a lot of the amazing events that I go to and I can shoot film at them. Um, and I can make a TikTok or I can make a YouTube or I can make an Instagram reel and get lots and lots and lots of followers out of it. I'm sorry if that annoys you or that really triggers you in some way, but that's kind of what I'm doing right now is like, just trying to gain followers. Uh, this is one of the many ways that I monetize my, my job, my profession isn't just taking pictures of race cars, it's driving people to certain channels and traffic and then affiliate links and the workshop series that I do. All of that stuff feeds back into how I make a living as a photographer. 90% of my work is from literally standing trackside taking a picture of a race car as it goes by for manufacturers, drivers, sponsors, all those things. However, um, yeah, I can still kind of have a little bit of fun. So a couple weeks ago when I went to my parents' house for Christmas, I found my mom's old Canon A1 camera, which is kind of cool. I think they made these in the 70s or 80s. Um, as far as I can tell, there was a 50 millimeter lens that was attached to it. so. I've got a 50 millimeter lens that I'm kind of using now, 
but I also have three other film cameras that I'm now shooting on. So a couple weeks ago before the Rolex 24 hour, I was surfing YouTube, surfing Instagram, um, and I found a video that a photographer made and he was using a film camera and it was the coolest film camera that I've ever seen in my entire life. I had to have it. I needed to have it right then and there. And I searched for it and I found it and I bought three of them. Actually, I bought five because I've already broken two because they're so cheap. But this is what I bought. This is a 1998 Jeff Gordon uh, race car camera. It's got so many cool details. The, the front of it is obviously amazing. Like this is just so cool. And it's so simple. Like there's nothing to this camera. Like it's so, it's so like light. Like, I don't know if you can hear how cheap it is, but it's also incredibly cheap. That's why I've broken two of them already. Uh, the shutter button is actually the gas can right here. And the, the left front wheel is the, the spool winder so you can rewind your film back in. This isn't a disposable, like this is a real, this is a real like reusable film camera. I mean, look at, look at how simple this is on the inside. Yeah, it's, it's junk basically, um, but it's so cool. And I already took it to a race. I took it to the Rolex 24 hour race and I had a lot of fun with it. I mean, I thought it was kind of cool to shoot a 24 hour on the number 24, but I had a lot of fun with it. But that's not the only camera I got. I found another one on eBay that might even be even cooler and it's Dale Earnhardt. I found the Intimidator. So it's the same, same camera. These are from 1998, um, but I found the Intimidator on eBay. Also really cool details and same camera, same level of, of cheapness. I mean, it's a piece of shit. Like I said, I've already broken two of them. Um, the plastic is really weak. When you're rewinding the film, like you feel like you're gonna break it every time. Yeah, it, it's just a cheap camera. I mean, there's nothing to it. There's no flash. The viewfinder isn't connected to the, the actual like lens, the shutter on it is incredibly slow. Like you can pan with this thing. Like when I took it to Daytona, I basically just followed a car as it went by me. And I really didn't have a chance to experiment with these cameras before I went to Daytona. So I brought this one with me and I panned a car going past me and you definitely are panning the car. I think it's probably about a, maybe an 80th of a second maybe a little bit slower, like a 60th of a second kind of shutter speed. I think the aperture is about F8. Um, you definitely need film for bright sunlight use. Like this has no ability to really change settings or anything on it. So you're pretty stuck once you're shooting. Um, but they're very cool. And I'm planning on taking Dale Earnhardt with me to a couple races, a couple of the Formula One races. And what I really want to do is I need to get a picture of Daniel Ricardo, Like I wanna do a portrait of Danny Rick on this camera. That's what I really want. Because if you may or may not know, Daniel Ricardo is a huge Dale Earnhardt fan. The reason he chose the number three is because he's a huge Dale Earnhardt fan. Um, so I think if I show Danny Rick this camera, he's gonna lose his mind because he's also a photographer. Uh, so if anybody has any ins to Danny Rick, call me, let me know. Hit me up in my DMs or my email or my phone if you have my phone number. Uh, yeah, let me know, because I would love to do a quickie portrait session with Daniel Ricardo in this. I might even let him borrow it for a minute and wander around the garage and take some pictures. Maybe we'll do an Instagram collab. Probably won't happen, but I would love to do uh, a quickie session with Daniel Ricardo in this camera. I also bought one more camera in that same vein. I haven't even taken it out of the box yet, but this is uh, Rusty Wallace's Miller Lite car. So yeah. Black and white color photos, carrying strap, fixed focus, action packed. So I bought three of these things. I actually bought five, broken two already. Um, you can find them on eBay. They're pretty hard to find actually. I think I've maybe bought uh, quite a few of the last ones that exist. So I have my mom's Canon A1 that I'm gonna be doing a little bit of film photography on. I've got some Portra 400. I'm gonna take this to Bahrain with me for the first Formula One race. I also have some 400 TX black and white film. Don't know what I'm gonna do with that. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, 
Stay tuned to see how this goes. I've posted a couple result pictures from Daytona on my Instagram, so go check that out. There was a two reels that I've posted. Um, but yeah, I had fun with it. I still think film is stupid, but I'm gonna mess around with it for the likes and views. I'm sorry if that offends you. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to my videos. Please like and subscribe to my, my channel. I'm gonna be doing lots more content. I have the Fast Frame series. I'm gonna be doing more vlogging. I'm gonna be doing lots of different things on, uh, on YouTube. Of course, I'm on Instagram, threads, Twitter, TikTok, all the places. So uh, yeah, please like and subscribe. Thank you for following and I'll see you guys soon.